Tribute by the wife, Nana Kanedu Adjaman Rawlings. It starts off with a poem. We started on the journey with wonder at the world. We skipped along with heads held high. Our flag of hope unfurled. Enthusiasm filled our days. As optimism grew, we had so many plans and dreams. Did some of them come true? But then our path grew steep and rough, and clouds obscured the sun. As problems raised their worried heads, we lost our sense of fun. But love was there through troubled times to ease the hurt away. With caring hands and gentle touch, it helped us through each day. So as the road goes winding on, step bravely mile by mile. Through sun and showers, hope and joy, the journey is worthwhile by Iris Heseldon. Just as the poem states, we started on a journey, one that was free and easy in spirit. I was innocent and you were streetwise. There was so much I did not know and understand about the real life outside the wings and home of Mr. and Mrs. J.O.T. Adjaman, since I had lived a very protected life under their roof. I had to learn to understand how to be streetwise, move along with the flow of your friends and acquaintances, but it still did not sit well with me. It went against all the upbringing I had intensely received under the roof of my parents. After several trials, I decided a leopard never changes its spots. I was who I was based on family values. I decided I could not change for the sake of love. You finally understood me to take me as I am. I was who I was, and there was nothing I could do about it. You sometimes called me snooty. I refused to accept that. I said it was based on my values. We had our ups and downs. However, our foundation of love for each other kept us together. We got married on January 29th, 1978. I recall you wanted us to elope and get married. Again, it did not sit well with me, and I said no. And you very quickly told me you were just tricking me to see my reaction. Family was very important to me. That is all I knew. So eloping without a wedding involving my family was out of the question for me. Our wedding remains a memorable day for me. It wasn't a military wedding because of your disillusionment with the military government and armed forces at the time. I do remember my father's words, quote, there are several reasons we send girls to school. But when you get married, you do not make a man your pillow. You stand on your own and earn your keep." Close quote. He advised you to encourage me in my endeavors because a working woman is a free woman. We were married and I learned to move into another family of just us. I tried. It was not easy, but I knew I had you as my support, so I pushed on. With the birth of our first child, your care and concern knew no bounds as you would spend all morning cleaning the house and doing all manner of chores before setting off for work so I could rest and see to the baby. You took pride in your fatherly duties. There was no task too tiresome or bothersome for you as you sought to take care of your young family. The scarcity of goods in the country at the time made things so difficult for everyone and so you decided to name our daughter Zanetto, which meant let the darkness end. The next few months had me in a constant state of fear as you were arrested countless times by the military intelligence, culminating in the historic trial after the May 15th uprising. Life after June 4th, 1979 was never laid back. It was a roller coaster. And to quote Iris Hilsudden, but then our path grew steep and rough and clouds obscured the sun. As problems raised their worried heads, we indeed lost our sense of fun. But love was there through troubled times to ease the hurt away.
close quote. Our home went from our little oasis to an open refuge for all manner of people that believed in your cause. You were passionate and open-hearted, sharing all you had without a thought for yourself. After the arrival of our second child, Ya Santwa, it felt like the nation was at its peak with hardship. In spite of this, Jerry, your gift of sharing knew no bounds. You would bring different people into our apartment, strangers and friends, for tea, coffee, and any meal you could lay your hands on in our kitchen. I tried countless times to hide the meager provisions we had for the children, but somehow you always discovered my stash, much to the mirth of your friends. After the 1981 December Revolution started, with all the difficulties of running a collapsed state, I saw less of you due to your schedule. When the restructuring and reconstruction took off, improvements to the national economy were clearly visible, and I would bring the girls over to visit on weekends and fortnightly. They never could hold back their excitement. When Amina and Kimathi were born, my work with the rural and urban communities intensified. You made me your eyes and ears to what was going on around the country. You trusted in the integrity and an astutement and astuteness of our women folk to give a good assessment of the reality on the ground. With your help and support, we were able to make the fight for women and children's rights a reality with the passing of the interstate succession laws, family accountability laws, and all the other laws passed on behalf of Ghanaian women and children. They are a testament to your concern for your nation when you were made aware of the difficulties women were facing in the country. You never hesitated to help with the passing of laws to protect the vulnerable and the voiceless. From 1983 to 1992, I worked assiduously on empowering the Ghanaian women. I knew my passion to transform the lives of women could become a reality. I had dreams of improving the lives of the urban poor communities through women, but it still remained a dream since I could do nothing without passing through the People's Defense Committees, who, by the way, totally disagreed with my style. I changed lanes like a sports car pushing past two trucks driving side by side. I decided to move away from the urban areas and concentrate on rural women. I squeezed through and started working with rural women and rural communities from the north to the south, east to the west of Ghana. Reports got to you that I was disturbing the people's defense committees. After listening to my rationale, you gave me a thumbs up to continue. You helped me by assessing all my issues and getting laws passed to support the women and children in Ghana in many fields. With all the opposition I got within the PNDC government, only one male appointee supported me, BBD Asamwa, who urged me on with the women's programs I was doing. He explained to you my intentions and the importance of allowing me to develop the women in Ghana to become self-sufficient and economically sound, since they hold half of the sky. So their empowerment will reflect on how the children in Ghana will grow and develop as well. You expected me to prove my worth by refusing to help my organization financially and challenging me flatly to raise my own funds if I felt the cause was important enough. Today, I appreciate and understand the importance of separating my NGO women's movement work from government business. I went all around the world boldly fundraising and shamelessly negotiating in different sectors for opportunities for our women and children in Ghana. Jerry, I know that God created us for each other. And today we make a formidable team, notwithstanding the ups and downs of life. We believed in each other and in our dream of making Ghana a country we could all be proud of. One, to set the pace for our sub-region and continent. I dare say we did not do a bad job. As you worked assiduously on state matters, I concentrated on empowering the women and improving the quality of life for them. Irrespective of their origins or creed, we were a team fighting to transform a collapsed state into one of potential prosperity for all. You did your best, and I played my part in my own way. You always said you did not need titles to define you. So you remained Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. You also said you did not need political titles to influence a party to do what is right and honest for Ghana. So for most, 
you remained chairman. To me, then for me, I say farewell with the words of Rachel Wallace. He's the kaleidoscope of the rainbow, the chuckle of the stream, the lark's glad call, the lily's perfume. He is the bud on the branch, the rich gleam of the fox's fur, the shy gaze of a fawn, the small cloud caught in a crate of trees. He is the gold that crowns the daffodils, the whisper in the wind, the song in the rain, the story of the seasons. He is life and love, the beginning and the end, an hour, a day, an eternity. Rest in perfect peace, my love. May you watch. I the wife. Come on.